Hi, I'm glad to see you at HodgePodge Lodge today. I have a new friend, and I want you to look around and figure out why I invited Mr. Brown to HodgePodge Lodge today. I bet you can. Welcome to HodgePodge Lodge, Bill. <laughs> Amy, have you looked around and figured out why I invited this interesting man here mm -hmm. today? What do you think? Well, he brought these things right here to show us. He brought these to show us, right? And why do you think I could have gone to the store and bought these, things, <laughs> bought some things like not not these things because these are very special. But what's special about Bill Brown, Jeffrey? What do you think? Mm. He's an artist. That's a very good way of saying it. He's a, what kind of artist would you say? A uh, woodblock artist. A woodblock artist. Good. Well, you've, you've been called lots of things, oh, right? right. <laughs> <laughs> How would you describe yourself, Bill? Woodcarver, craftsman. Um, woodcarver, and uh, wood carving is a craft. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you think he's interested in nature? Yeah. How can you tell? He carves things out of wood. Out of wood, and some of them are special nature things, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Like that one right there in front of you, Jeff. I know. Would you mm -hmm. like to feel him? Don't move him, but feel him. Does he remind you of anything in a story that you might have heard in school, mm -hmm. or a, a famous piece of music? Um, Peter and the Wolf. Right. Right. Isn't that just like the wolf right. in Peter and the Wolf? Lean and his ribs are showing. So he's skinny ribs. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way it feels because uh, sometimes you see wood carvings that are so smooth that they're not as interesting as the way you. Eat. But that's one of the beauties of wood, I think, uh, Miss Jean. The the feel of it. The and different things have a different feel. That's right. The wolf is sort of rough, mm -hmm. but this owl is. Uh, now, did you have any particular owl in mind when you did him? I had uh, several sketches. One uh, was uh, from a front page of a newspaper. Uh, uh, another from uh, an ad for a commercial product. And uh, I, I just combined them and into a, a figure that I, I enjoyed doing. How would you get started? I, I've always, I think, been interested in wood and the things that uh, can be done with wood. It's just, just a beautiful medium to, to play with. And I don't know, I, as a kid, I used to do pen knife whittling type things and uh, found a book that turned me on about 10 years ago and been at it since. Have you ever tried whittling with a pen knife? Yeah. yeah. Have you? Yeah. Did you make anything? That no. Just, just, but that's important because you have to learn the right way to use it so you don't chop yourself up. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, well, uh, Bill uh, brought some things for you kids to try, something that you can actually try and, oh, and uh, mm -hmm. get your hands into it a little later when we go to the discovery table. So maybe you'll get turned on and you'll take up some wood carving because you don't... Uh, I see you used a piece of an old board here. Just looks like it's been uh, right, out in the a weather, piece of driftwood. Right? You don't have to go buy expensive wood. No, to really well. don't. Yeah, I like that that little scene there because you get like and the that is that hair wood too. That cowboy's yes, hair. Yes, yes, it's all <laughs> little Mexican hair. He's not the cowboy. It looks yeah. uh, almost black plastic because you got such a. The uh, the paints are are just watercolors or whatever. Uh, some look better, more natural. natural. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh. And this this cowboy here looks like somebody I know. <laughs> <laughs> his hands in his pocket. Jeff, you brought a couple treasures today, and tell us tell us about these. <laughs> well, that's a jawbone. Mm -hmm. It's like a horse or a cow, and that's yeah, a skull. And that's a skull. And I I don't think I can add anything to that. This almost looks like a monkey skull, but there aren't any monkeys around here. You say your mother bought them at an at a antique yeah. uh, auction? Well, maybe somebody brought them back from some other country and had them mm, in their attic. Maybe. Lots of mystery. <laughs> <laughs> some skulls I can recognize, but I don't know about that. Have you ever seen a bone made out of wood? Uh, no. Well, take a look over on the desk. Yeah. There's a, a wooden, wooden bone. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it was a real one, doesn't it? Yeah. A funny dog. Now, how do you describe the way this kind of a carving? That's 
A caricature. A caricature. Do you know that word, Amy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pretty much. You know, it's a funny word. It simply means taking some of the features that that the animal might have and exaggerating them, making them more more, more, more prominent, humorous. more humorous. It's it's a light. They do that in the, in the political cartoons in the newspaper right. all the time. If somebody has a big nose, they make... Sometimes they just draw the big nose and That's you know exactly who it is. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, sometimes some other feature. Well, speaking of animals, uh, I have a little orphan animal here in my basket. You know, it has to be very tiny because it's not taking up very much room. How about... Would you set him back there? And I thought maybe you kids might like to help me feed him before we go to the discovery table and take a, our turn at wood carving. Now, a few days ago, one of my friends, um, well, she's my friend now, but she wasn't when she called me up. She said that she had found this poor little creature out in her front yard, and they thought, she and her husband thought it might be a, a possum. But uh, when she brought it over, I decided it had to be a uh, what lives in trees and and has nests in holes in trees and they have gray fur on them when they're growing Squirrel. up. And, right. But you really, it's hard to tell at this stage, isn't it? His tail doesn't have any hair on him. Mm -hmm. And you hear him making little grunting noises. It looks like a bat. Uh, I'm tr trying to keep him going with some warm milk. What did I do with my... In your uh, little Is basket. It in the basket? Oh, mm -hmm. okay. A little nest for him here. And uh, a little drink of milk for him. Go over to the discovery table. Here. I have a book that says they open their eyes when they're 19 days old, so you know he's not that old yet. This is milk and corn syrup and um, baby cereal mixed up together. Yeah. The hardest thing to do is to keep him warm enough because he doesn't have any fur or any nice warm mother to snuggle up to or any brothers and sisters. You can feel a little hair on his head a little bit. Can you? I can see his nose is getting black. Would you like to touch him, Jeff? Mm. Isn't it amazing how he has... You can see his eyes are going to be... Be where his eyes are going to be, and his ears are there, but they're all sort of plastered back. Mm. Little tiny feet. And a little skinny tail. So he seems to be doing pretty well. So if I just carry him around with me wherever I go and keep his milk warm, <laughs> he may get as big as a, a squirrel that that Mr. Brown is working on. Would you like to go over to the discovery table and see it? Come on, Laura. Aurora loves to chew on wood bills, so be careful. Uh, see, here's the... He's not finished yet. I still have some work to do on his feet and color him up somehow but uh and his tail comes off isn't that a neat idea is that a something you invented mm, uh, no i think that's a standard, a standard fairly uh, typical thing, uh, when the, the project gets big it can be made up in, in two pieces in smaller <laughs> pieces and he's going to be and oh he's going to be up on his well on his, his tail is a little heavier than Oh. He tends to rock back. He'll be mounted somehow on a piece of log, uh -huh. maybe. Yeah. Well, that's nice. And here's a, a is that a special kind of bear? A, a, grizzly, a grizzly bear. A grizzly bear. And does this remind you of a funny poem you might have heard one day, someday? <laughs> I never saw... Uh, Purple cow. Haven't you ever heard that little rhyme? <laughs> I never saw a purple cow. I never hoped to see one. But I can tell you anyhow, I'd rather see than be one. <laughs> That's the purple cow. <laughs> <laughs> and here's a, oh, a sp green spotted goat. That's using your artistic license. <laughs> right on. Imagination. And, well, is he reading or what is he doing to the book? 
eating. Goats are famous for chewing up all kinds mm. of uh, different kinds of things. Like I had one once who liked to eat the funny papers. What's this? Looks like salt shaker. This is the woodcarver's mallet or hammer. Mm. And it, notice it's round. Yeah. Uh, that's because the woodcarver, when he picks it up and starts striking the tool, doesn't have to worry where the flat part is. It, it's you it's always everywhere. You're, it's everywhere. So you always hit the tool where you want to hit the tool. Oh, for goodness sakes! So the woodcarver mallet. This one is a small one, and for smaller work, and it, it wasn't quite heavy enough. So, but we weighted it, put a little mm -hmm. bit of lead in it. I thought it was going to be one of those things that they oh. a mortar and pestle well, you know, ah, like they grind have, up things with. It does have that look. Well, what is it you're going to show us how to make? Something like this? Yes, I'm going to show you how to go through uh, the process of making a relief carving. These carvings are what we call in the round. They're, they're three-dimensional. They're, they're, uh, they're a you figure. Can all the you can see all, all around it. The relief carving is another special kind of little carving. It's, uh, it's trying to get the appearance of, of the object in just about this much wood, hmm. in a very thin, raised figure of wood. And, and I'm going to walk through that process, that technique with you, and give you a chance to try it. Well, fine. That's okay. It. Well, it's hard to believe that uh, we're going to get that, anything See, that I, beautiful. Is it, are you going to show us your tools? I thought <laughs> if we can slide this over here, we can move the... <laughs> That's the way with most good hobbies, they take up a lot of room. Let's see, maybe we'll yeah, put those, these in front of me here. Right. right. Oh, right now we're all Now, saying. let me just show you something about the tools. The basic tool for the wood carver is still the knife. It just mm. looks just like a paring knife or a smaller blade, perhaps. But it's it's basic. You do most of, of the carving I do with, with the knife. These other tools, notice... This is a nice, straight cutting edge right across the front. This is called a, a firmer. It looks like a chisel. A chisel is another word for it. A firmer. That's a new word. And you have the you difference have... between the firmer and the chisel is that it's it's sharpened slightly differently. But mm -hmm. but it is a chisel type tool. Now we can take that same firmer and curve it a little bit and this tool then is called a gouge <laughs> and it essentially does just that it gouges out wood you can take a look at that and, and increase your vocabulary Jeff. <laughs> i know you're very interested in words and you too amy a firmer and a gouge and that's uh, i guess you must have something there where you make all those oh yes like on the wolf the, where you made all they, those they come like in that. a variety of sizes and for example if i can reach over here Here's a here's a smaller version of the gouge. Oh, <laughs> that's cute. <laughs> so you can make little narrow, oh, right? Little yeah, narrow gouge this. cuts. Yeah. Yeah. You want to see that, Amy? That's about how he made the rough spots on the wall and stuff. So um, yeah, I'm glad to see you didn't clean up your toolkit before you came. <laughs> it shows that I'm, you really I'm, do work. I'm I'm ashamed. <laughs> <laughs> now, Jeff and Amy, the what we're going to try to do in the next uh, few minutes is make a little mushroom. Notice the piece of wood I've got is, is very rough. It's, uh, uh, it's rough sawn, it's called. It just hasn't been smoothed. Feel that, children. Can you feel it? And it, I, I chose it because it, it has a contrast. It makes the mushroom look so much nicer when it's awesome. raising out of the very rough background of the wood. Now the first thing we'll we'll do is draw a picture of the mushroom on the block roughly where we want it. Uh, this is about where. I just draw right on the block. It takes a, uh, some time to to develop the, the mushroom design that we're after, but 
once we have the design, I can make a lot of them just like it with a little cardboard. Did you make that up yourself? Yes. Yeah. This uh, is a project in one of my classes. Oh, so now that you've learned to wood carve, you teach it to other people. Yes. Right? That's, that's a good way to learn better. <laughs> now what we have to do is make cuts around this edge of this mushroom so that we can separate it from the rest of the wood. And that I'll do with a very small firmer and my little mallet. And I need one other <laughs> <laughs> instrument. <laughs> instrument. <laughs> I hold it down close to the tip of the wood and just See what I've done? I've, I've I'm beginning to outline the whole mushroom with vertical cuts. Well, that's, I never knew that's how you started out, and I never knew you needed a, a one of these things. That looks like fun. <laughs> <laughs> of course, if the carving gets bigger, the mallet and tools will get bigger. Uh -huh. Well, so. And this, what's this little thing? You this have? this little, little gadget, working? yes. Uh, one of the tricks of doing the wood carving is try to hold the materials so that they don't move. Uh, they're dangerous. Oh. One could cut uh, oneself very severely if, if it isn't held down. And I, uh, this is called a wood carver's hold down device. And, and, and it's, I can slide the block around. It hooks over the edge of the table. Yes, yeah, perfect. To make several of them of a different size and accommodate a number of projects. And I'm going to leave this one now. Here's one that I've I've done all the outlining on. I've made the vertical cuts. It's separated from the background, and now I'm going to take some of this background away. And that's done with a gouge. The, the curve tool that I showed you before. And what I want to do is, is show you how to do this safely, too. You want to keep your fingers behind the cutting edge. And, and I usually keep my finger on the tool so I know where it is. And you start with little pushing cuts and take these little chips oh. off. I'll have to sweep up after we're finished. <laughs> That's all right. Aurora leaves the floor covered with sunflower seeds. <laughs> you are welcome to. I think you'll find this is a very, very clean uh, craft because uh, the, the chips just sweep up. Mm -hmm. Well, that's neat. That must be a very sharp tool. It is. Now, you can see that I've started the process of taking the background down. I'll take away background out to the pencil line that I drew. Uh, it, I have to go back several times and make the vertical cuts again because I haven't, in the first try, didn't get it deep enough to, yeah. to do it. Yeah, well, we can compare, you can compare, compare with, the stage. With right. The, see how much he's taken out on this one. Now, are you... Are you Children, did I get a chance to try? Yes. Now, yeah. now, would you like to try taking some of the background off? Why don't I just slide it over here? Oh, weight it down here. Now, what I'll, happens if you I'll slip? Yeah. And... Why don't you go and supervise? As I can see, here, let me, yeah, one let me little go too far and let take let the mushroom. Sure. <laughs> hold, hold this with this hand. Hold this up here like this, Jeff, and just. Push slowly. Oh, the little slot helps you stop. That's right, yeah. exactly. Oh, right. Matter of fact, it's called a stop cut. <laughs> See? Oh, look at that. Speedy Jeff. Now blow your chips away. And now you can see where you've been, okay? There you go. Okay. That's it. That's it. You're going to be a, a 
it good with Carver. How's that? Want to let Amy try? Here, let's lift this up a little bit, and I think it'll... There we go. Do it work on this side, Amy. Hold this with your hand. That's it. And that's it. Start up closer to the line. That's it. That's it. There you go. Is it hard, Amy? <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's not very hard. No. It looks like pretty soft. Well, the wood. tools are very, very sharp. Yeah, having sharp tools is a there you go. half the battle. Aurora's even getting interested. He says, boy, that looks like something there. I'd like and to that's, do. And that's, that's <laughs> all there is to it. We. One thing I want to mention, the background, as we, as we gouge these little marks out, if you notice, we... You can see that it makes a pattern. Well, those yeah. patterns become part of the design. Part of the design, yes. That's and what I was admiring because that's what I like about your the wolf and the uh, bear. You know, you have the you can actually see where the tools have been. The uh, I I could use a smaller gouge and make that, a, a different pattern. That looks like what you've done. That's what I've done with this one. See, now this mushroom has been removed from the background or the background removed from the wood so that the mushroom stands out. Now I can start making it look like a mushroom, but notice the background's a little different from the one we were working on. Just a different tool and a different effect. I know, just noticed something, how good it smells. This is basswood. <laughs> yes. It does have you a know, good, good smell. smell. Now what I'd like to do Let's put this one aside. Let's make out we've we've taken that figure and raised the background this far. Now let's shape it. We're going to make it look like a mushroom. First thing I'll do here is draw on it a little bit more. I'll go back to the little picture I had. We want to try to make this mushroom look like it's a full-size mushroom growing out of the back of the wood. That you can just reach in <laughs> and pick it. <laughs> and we'll draw some some lines on it to where that edge is. There. And the shaping process, I'll, I'll use the firmer and I'll use the gouges again. And I'll show you, I'll do the same thing. Notice I'll hold it back here and start to shape this mushroom. Give it, give it some mushroom type shape. Oh, it's getting round already. Here, take a look at that. Uh, children need to see you know, what he's doing. It feels nice and I'm soft. I know. I thought that uh, Bill had used sandpaper, but he says no. It's all done with no, tools. That's right. That's good. <laughs> now you can see what he meant by having the rough background with the smooth mushroom popping right out of the middle of it. And even the knot hole adds to the effect. Now what we'll do is we'll let's let's take a little bit of this out so that you can see how that is going to look. Let's let's use a small gouge for that purpose. And this is the underneath of the mushroom where the gills right. are. Right. We want to, we want to make the mushroom disappear into the block of wood by moving this back edge into the back. Oh, look at those neat curls. When I was a little girl and the hired man used to be working on something in the workshop, we'd, we'd hang those curls over our ears. Did you ever do that, <laughs> Amy? They were long, thick curls from boards. <laughs> well, the next time you see a wood carving somewhere, I bet you'll can stop and take a second look, won't you? And think about what it, what it looked like in the beginning and all the different tools that were used on it and maybe what the artist was like because everybody does his own thing. Here's a beautiful moose. There's. Are they plug pegged in? Yes, the, the antlers are, are separate. There's a, a school of wood carver who says that uh, you should make all of your projects out of one block of wood. I've, I haven't quite <laughs> met that. Well, uh, what difference does it make? Really? <laughs> <laughs> it turns out so well. <laughs> well, there we are. 
Would you like to try using the gouge and shape it a little bit? Let me come around and show you again. Now this tool, Amy's used exactly the same way, and you just slide it along like so, okay? And we got the corner hooked under there. Let's get rid of it first. <laughs> Because that has to woods. happen sooner or later, anyhow. See how oh, nice, yeah. needed, nice, smooth chips. But you have to know when to stop, right? <laughs> <laughs> the beginner usually stops too soon. And then we raise it up a little bit and we can sort of hollow it out. We want real dynamic shape to it. Well, thank you very much. Keep on working with Amy, that's fine. I, I just have to say goodbye to my friends. Uh, I hope you enjoyed meeting Bill Brown and seeing some of the many things that go into wood carving. And maybe you can try your hand at a simple project, maybe a mushroom. Make a mushroom come right out of a little block of wood. But be very careful because the tools are sharp. Thanks for coming and come there back soon are. again.